Togozani, um, I'm Gogo Lerato. I'm Gogo Kandalimbube. My lighting is not brilliant today. Um, today has been a very um, interesting day. Um, I have so much to tell you guys. But okay, uh, I think let's start at the top. I had a crazy day today. Um, I had a lot of things that I've been questioning you know, on my own about Badimu and my journey. So today I went to town and I was telling a friend of mine, you know, I was like, no, oh, you know, I need to start living and blah, blah, blah. You know, always just, um, <laughs> whenever I feel like I cannot go any further, or whenever I feel like I'm at the edge of who I am, um, hold last some some interesting uh, divine thoughts from Badimu. So on my way back today, I had these beautiful white braids. And on my way back today, I just felt to remove them. They were actually feeling so heavy. All right, so my network's giving me problems. And so on my way back, I uh, got this idea for the braids. Um, they don't serve you anymore. Uh, so hence my duke um i look like a chicken uh and actually um i don't know what it's what it's going to do for me but i feel like uh to my network is today my network and my lighting are giving me problems but anyway uh so i just felt go on my head and um i feel like there's some kind of spiritual maybe revelation coming up with that so i feel like you know i feel empty now uh i literally just had a beautiful vision of my hair so hopefully i'm going to be doing that very okay so i hope we're going to be able to get this done with the network today it's just oh, it's crazy okay let's start quick Arapate, our networks might be giving us problems because I don't know if you guys can see this. I'm going to just put these candles. Today I put up color candles. Uh, you wouldn't be able to see them um, because of the bright light, but I'm going to just go ahead. Uh, I've already done Pep already. Uh, so yeah, let's pass up. Lisselibon <laughs> So, okay. Uh, yeah, you know what? This network is definitely jealous. Definitely jealous. And, okay. Uh, let's hope we're not going to get any more distractions today. Uh, Paddling, done. All right. Um, so, today, I, I couldn't decide what to speak about. But, I got a brilliant idea just as I was sleeping. Right. So today I'm going to speak about relationships and hotwasa. And why do Badimu basically destroy our relationships when it's time? You know, relationships have actually been made into even jokes. Or, you know, if, if a relationship gets bad enough, it's time for you to go into Twasa. You know, I've seen a lot of jokes about that. Um, a lot of people, whenever I they do come into contact with me relationships are normally their biggest issue and they're like you know what uh, my man doesn't love me anymore blah 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 um relationships in general seem to be the one thing that steer people who are gifted um to twasa you know it's normally relationships that hurt them to a point where now they they feel what it's time they've got to find some other higher source so now the question becomes why? Why? Why the trend? Why do relationships um, do this? I mean, why is it that you end up in, in such a mess um, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically, you know, either the relationship was abusive 
or you know the person that you love uh abandoned you or you know it's just so many issues normally with relationships and hang out there's people who say hey Coco, you know i gain a little relationship problems and i believe i've got a calling it's normally like a biggest indicator for a lot of people uh where they will start to want to search or are they gifted so back to my analogy and this is an analogy that i will use every single week because it is a foundation of what i believe in right so god the the source has taken itself and divided itself into many components of itself and said let's create uh, a body different bodies for myself and through these different bodies uh let me forget that i am divine that through the process of life um i work through the process of life to go back home or rather to go back to knowing that i'm divine so essentially we are all individuations of god right and this when you apply it to the relationships means that you me your partner your colleague everyone around you is actually god so at our core we are the same thing so as a person when you go into at work um you must realize that from a spiritual point of view how can no come see thing everyone that you see around you is just an expression of god and you are an expression of god too so it means gore la tswana um i'll even go as far as to say it means you're the same person so you get into the office in different clothing but it is just you in the room because it is god in the room um you go into a relationship you are in relationship with yourself i know it's a bit of a crazy analogy but that is literally taking the word of genesis um and applying it directly it means that whoever you choose to be with whoever that you choose to love whoever you choose to partner with that person is an expression of god at their soul at their core at their at their foundation they are a portion of god so they, that means they are you because you are a portion of god so actually if god wanted to um if he wanted to create himself in one image he could have easily chosen all of us to look like gogo claudette he could have easily chosen all of us to look like gogo lorato imagine if your entire life everyone in this world we all looked the same i think it would make it very obvious who we are all differentiations of god so as people we become so easily distracted by the fact that we look different uh and we are exp- expressing god in different ways that we actually forget that we are components of god we are individuations of god so the reason why it would make sense for badim who we've also concluded is ultimately god the reason why it would make sense for them to destroy your relationship is two things as people when we enter relationships we enter relationships from a lack mentality we grow up we've gone through whatever our burdens we've gone through abandonment we've gone through pain we've gone through um whatever the pain that we've been through and this is pain that we've experienced you know fundamentally let's say from our parents right so the moment your mother and your father they get together they combine their individual um life lessons they combine their individual connection they combine their individual aspirations but they also combine their individual fears right and then you are created and you further spend another 9 months in your mother's womb and most of the time our mothers are not happy or they've gone through some kind of physical suffering or emotional suffering or psychological suffering so we also spend 9 months in the body in the divine body um of 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 our mothers and these divine bodies are going to set the pace they're going to set the tone 
for the life that we live. You must remember now that each of us as a soul, as a spirit, we choose our parents, right? Um, we choose our parents. Whenever a mother is pregnant with a child, um, a particular spirit would love to experience itself through the physical manifestation of the mother. So we all chose our setups. We all chose where we come from. We chose our mothers, um, whether it is out of love or whether it is out of being able to gain certain tools because your mother's mindset, your mother's life experience, your mother's life purpose, for whatever the reason as a spirit, um, you have a contractual agreement with your mother that I'm going to come here as your child. And I need you. I need you particularly because of maybe where you come from, what you look like, what you've been through, right? So we spent nine months also in our mother's womb going through whatever that our mothers go through, right? And it is deliberate, by the way, because I have just highlighted we choose our mothers and our fathers uh, because the DNA as a soul, as a spirit, our spirits on their own, they don't really need a body. So we choose a body and how we do that is that we choose our parents because we choose that particular DNA. And you spent this, this nine months in your mother's womb. And in this womb, you get to experience your mother and her hardships and her pains and her joys. You get to experience your mother as a spirit. And you get to take that experience and you transcend it into a physical reality. So each of our births is an experience that we have with our mothers and just like the umbilical cord it's like we are co-creating yet again with our mothers they need to push us out we need gravity to pull ourselves out right they need to breathe they need to to be calm they need to control their body and ultimately you know uh, the universe does control the body for them or not right depending on our spiritual agreement right they need to do all of this for us, just for us to be here. And we get here. However, we've inherited a lot of the fundamental problems and a lot of the fundamental strengths of our parents, of our DNA. So this is where most people will say, when you toss her, you are you are healing the karmic debt in the family. You have chosen that family. You have chosen that particular badimu. So that karmic debt, it becomes yours. You incur it now. So, Kaufela, you know, I guess maybe that's where the Bible likes to say we are all born in sin. There is no such thing as sin. I don't believe in it. However, it is showing us that we are born into a particular situation that is going to bring us healing and that is going to set the tone for how our lives are going to unfold. So, we also have th the first three years. It's been proven. First three years of a child's life are very important. So, we go through all these things in the first three years of our lives. Um, we experience all these things and most of them we can't, maybe kind of, we can't talk. Uh, I have a lot of memories of when I was a baby and it's just crazy. But we, we are experiencing all these things where we are not able to physically connect with this physical world. However, it doesn't mean that we are emotionless. Um, we are actually at our purest form. We are actually at our most open form. And we grow up. Then we grew up, right? And we, we've been taught, okay, don't date, don't play with boys, blah, blah, blah. And then we get into relationships. So what has happened was, from the beginning, as we are conditioned, this life is meant to condition us. We become conditioned to think, behave, be in a particular way. Because when we are not um, in a particular way, we always receive punishment. When you're a child and you do things in a particular way and your parents cannot understand it, chances are they'll give you a hiding. If they feel like you're being disobedient, you'll get a hiding. You will go to school where you, will, you should learn a particular curriculum in a particular time. And when you cannot do that, then you will be spoken down to, you will be, you know, you'll be condescended and you as, an, as a spirit will be attacked. Right. So you will get your, your children that are called underachievers or you are stupid, whatever, whatever the frustration. 
uh, when you struggle with, with, with homework and that and you don't do it. I mean, we do this. We give our kids hidings. And then, so we spent the majority of our lives being forced to, into a mold that requires us to be individuals or adults that will be in a particular way. Can you imagine how many influences our children have by the time that they are teenagers? You know, what we eat, what we understand of life, what we understand of, life, of poverty, of wealth, of education, of all the things in this world is shaped greatly by the people around us. You know, when we grow up in poor situations and we watch other children uh, living better lives, that starts to make us feel like we are less than. When we see other kids doing really well at school and they're A-grade students, that starts to make us feel like we are less than. We live in a world where we cannot believe that each of us is gifted in their own way. We live in a world where certain things or certain gifts or certain traits or certain looks are more important than others. So as a child growing up who is typically not beautiful, you would have a lot of problems. You would struggle to connect with friends, right? So we go through all of these conditions. And then we grow up, we become teenagers, we evolve. Now our bodies become ready now to envelope this higher self or to envelope all these lessons um, to be able to create other people. You know, that's basically what happens in puberty. So we fall in love, which also um, fights against what we've been conditioned to do because we grow up learning, especially girls, don't play with boys, they're going to make you pregnant, blah, blah, blah. And then, well, you know, for some reason, because nature is nature, uh, you decide to have sex with some guy when you're probably underage, and then uh, you fall pregnant. Wamakala, you're at school, right? But the fundamentals here was you fell in love with someone. For the first time, someone else looked at you and said that you are beautiful. Or for the first time, someone looked at you and they felt that they loved you. So for the first time, you realize that everything that you come from was not necessarily important, but it can be changed, you know. Kwayenu, you may have been maybe not an intelligent student and your mom gave you hiding for not achieving so well at school. But here is this partner, this man, this woman, this boy, this girl, who finds you so amazing. And by the way, this person finds you amazing and they don't know you. And at the time, you're not afraid um, that you don't, they don't know you. Um, you're not afraid that you don't know them. You're not seeing them from a spirit level, that this is God's way of bringing someone or a way to declare your individual uniqueness. We don't see relationships that way. We see a person filling up our ego, filling up our past pains, and this person becomes the most important thing to us. So Rajola enters Njolo. Boyfriend, baby is so cool. He loves you. You love him. It's great. Um, you don't need to tell him um, some of the most embarrassing things and the most painful things that have happened in your life. Because you know what? This love just takes over you. And it's so exciting. But what happens is that this love now becomes the focal point of who you are. And it's because this is our way, this is our mind's way of trying to sort of erase everything. The love that was sent by God to you to remind you that you can be anything now becomes the focal point. So this love, this relationship starts to break the rule or the first commandment. I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods. We become addicted to this love. We become engrossed in this love. We wrap this person around us and we wrap ourselves around this person so much um, that it becomes a love where they are above us. 
they become our focal point. They become the thing that most matters to us. They start to become how we identify ourselves. And you can see this over and over in society. Uh, I'm married. You know, if you're married, yeah, it's wonderful. You know, society starts to clap their hands and say, this is a worthy woman. This is a wise woman. She got married. Uh, you know, versus when you have a child and you're at home. Then you have that child in Barwin's apostle, right? So, but never run out of wedlock, kitty apostle. You can imagine how that goes. And the kids were Honyalani, um, Robani Lidi Tumalan, Zabaholo. Those kids are children. Kibana, they're family. You guys become a family. So, we grow up wanting this social acceptance, we grow up wanting this validation. And the moment we meet this person, this person becomes that one thing that's going to validate us. So we throw away working on our past pains. We throw away addressing our mothers, our fathers, and, uh, and you know, connecting with them. We even get to a point where we will disrespect our parents to be with this person, right? No, this guy cannot come. I go let the fleet go and clean whatever. Where now I hear you going out to see you're not supposed to be out at night. When you're pushing it, you want to go out at night. Because now this guy is there. Suddenly, this man becomes your end all and be all. When you're supposed to go to school, you're thinking about him. When you're supposed to do whatever, you're thinking about him. And this relationship continues until it breaks. Most of our first relationships, they come to a complete breakup, a catastrophe, where now we are let down, right? So this first let down, it's like now the first time when you realize that not everything um, that is shining is gold. However, instead of realizing that this first lover of yours was a universal lesson to remind you of what is important, you don't even see that. What we do is we become so addicted to the high that we had being in love with that person. And what comes up in our minds, because our human minds always try to justify things and make us to understand things. Our mind now goes back to that experience of love and says, what did I do wrong? That is the first thing that we think of. What did I do wrong? Um, you know, I get to live with the defense in his car i did everything you know uh most of us learn to have sex in those relationships and we're not even sure if we want it um so there you know we want to experience sex now maybe because it's going to make us cool i did all of this and now he is gone what did i do wrong and in, instead of realizing that this person was a life lesson he was a life experience he was you becoming, he was you becoming evolved. He was the beginning stages of your evolution. And simply, because your contract with that person has ended. Why? You and that person are components of God. You are God, he is God. And there's only one God. So you and that person are the same. That's why the contract ended to begin with. It was God agreeing with God that it's time for us to part. But when we take it from this human experience, we say, what did I do wrong? Something is wrong with me. So we go back to those past pains that we should have actually resolved or we should have taken and brought into this relationship to be able to resolve and spoken about them if we need to and seen these people, you know, work work through life with us we often didn't do not even put the people who claim to love us under the test of knowing if they truly love us i mean if you cannot speak your truth about anything then your love for that person is not unconditional it's conditioned if you cannot say to somebody i struggle with jealousy and I don't know how I'm going to work around that. And I get so upset when you talk to other girls. You are, you are conditioned. Your love is conditioned. Right? Because you're not allowing that person to work through those things with you or to leave. So we go into these relationships with the fear that this addiction that we have to this high, to this person who validates us, 
We go through relationships so afraid that they will leave us. Now, isn't that sad? So we grow up and then once they leave, we feel like something was wrong. Okay, come second relationship. Okay, at least a bit of experience now. Uh, you kind of had sex before. And okay, why you? You know, sex, let's go. You meet this person and the first thing you want to do is have sex with that person. Because in your spirit mind, you by entering, by letting that person enter your body, you're saying, I need you to know the deepest parts of me. That's what sex is. I need you to know me deep down. However, you again contradict yourself. You have sex with this person, but you will never communicate the inner deepest part of you to that person. You acquire a portion of that person's DNA and you bring that person into your body, into your soul. But you do not allow them the opportunity yet again to leave you. Why? Because you're afraid they will. So you spend yet another relationship now focusing on the sex. Leaving out the things that are important to you. Leaving out your pains. Leaving out what you should work on um, and focusing on the sex. And that's why sex sells, right? Because it has become our focal point. You want to keep a man, sleep with him, right? You, you go through the cycle and then guess what happens? The sex dries out. Because it doesn't have a foundation. It doesn't have a foundation. It's a physical act. It's a physical thing that you have learned to do to be able to keep a person. Or you feel like you can connect with a person through sex only. Um, yet again, you are having the sex with this person, but you are afraid that they will leave you. You are having sex with this person. You are having kids with this person. You are having a relationship. You are having a marriage with this person. But you are afraid... That they will leave you. You are afraid that if you don't talk right to them, if you don't uh, give them whatever, if you cannot do whatever for them, that they will leave you. So yet again, you are stuck with a fundamental problem. A problem of your own abandonment. You've taken your past pains, your past abandonments, your past worries. And now you have just fast-tracked them and brought them into this relationship. So... Irregardless of how, you know, your upbringing was, we will all have problems in our upbringings. But now, it becomes more important for you to sort of push all of those issues, that karmic debt. It becomes important to push that karmic debt away instead of working on it. And take this individual yet again and violate commandment number one. I am the Lord thy God, you shall have no other God. Now, the second commandment, if I remember correctly, is, okay, you shall have no other gods. Um, no, I'm actually thinking about the Sabbath. I'm trying to, I can't believe I've forgotten the second commandment. And if someone knows it, please type it so I can remember it, because I know it's important, right? The third, the third commandment is honor the Sabbath. Sabbath is the day where you talk to yourself. But the Sabbath is also um, your private parts. It's your body. Honor your Sabbath. Honor your body. Honor the temple that you pray to God with because that temple is the one that God has created to put its spirit in. Um, and because we don't honor our Sabbath, we take that temple and we let it be misused. We can call it misused, but at a universal level, level there is no such thing because we are all God experiencing itself. So eventually now this relationship goes on and then, you know what, it becomes a pattern. And in each relationship, as you seek more and more and more and more to get this validation from this person, as you seek that more and more, the more of yourself you lose. Enter relationship with the married person. Enter the relationship with whatever. Enter the relationship now with the person who talks down on you. Enter the relationship with the person who will beat you. Enter the relationship to a person who will say, you're a burden to me. Because what the universe does to do, what God does, is when you don't get the lesson, he keeps on bringing a more and more and more clearer way for you to see that you've got issues. The beginning of your problems was feeling abandonment, feeling unworthy. You grew up feeling unworthy because you grew up poor, ugly, whatever the case. Stupid, we are going. So as each relationship comes, each of these relationships, you open them up with sex. 
you take this person and you put them into your innermost deep part, your spiritual self. You want them to experience you. But now they're experiencing the angry part of you, the abandoned part of you, the part of you in pain. They get to take a contract with you and they go into your body and they partake in that. So you invite someone to partake in your misery. And because we are all spirits and we are all God, we start to become mirrors to each other. So that person starts to mistreat you, right? As a mirror to yourself. You have been mistreating yourself your entire life. You have been hurting yourself your entire life because after every relationship, you've been saying, what's wrong with me? After everything, you're saying, I'm not beautiful enough. I'm not sexy enough. I'm not intelligent enough. That person left because I couldn't. You start to internalize that person. So what happens even then through the law of the universe, you start to attract the type of person that you are. You start to form a universal contract with the person who highlights your highest truths. The universe does not judge. It brings you what you ask for. And for every time you feel like something is wrong with you, chances are you will attract somebody who will validate that for you. So your relationships get to a point where you are being validated God nuts back. So what happens is you start to have sex with your own demon, actually. Your own demons, your own past pains. They start to manifest in that person because you've attracted now uh, a person who reflects or who mirrors your inner feelings. And as you have sex with that person, it becomes clearer and clearer that you are sleeping with your own demon. You are married to your own demon. You are wanting or trying to hold on to your own demon. So what does this relationship, this partner do to you? Because now they are a reflection of who you are. They start to mistreat you. They talk down to you. They insult you. They tell you you're stupid. They run around with other girls or guys. They become with other people. They go after other people. They put you down. They don't have sex with you. They don't show affection towards you. They, they get to a point where they eventually just block you off and the reason why that happens is because you are numb you've gotten to this place where you are numb where you will take anything from this relationship where you are so desperate for validation and it's validation that is that is caused that is sponsored by past pains and demons it becomes so important to you it starts to create its own entity in this person. So that is why even when we say you need to do a cleansing, mostly we are cleansing these, this, the sequence of past pains and past angers that have formed to a point that they become a person. You start to see them in your partner. You start to see them in your dreams. That's where you'll get the lady. You're being attacked by your own by your own demons. You are being attacked by your own karma. You start to see people in your dreams attacking you, um, having sex with you, having having forceful, unpleasant sex with you. Because you are so misaligned. Right? And you know, that's where, like I'm saying, you will go for a cleansing and whatever. Ngaka will tell you, hey, listen. Uh, and you're like, but how? How did I get the nyama? Right? But what you did not realize was that as you were going, what happened was you started now to create a personality. You started to create a personality from all these pains. So this personality becomes this thing. So... So this thing now starts to create a personality, right? Um, that's why I the lady, by the way. Shate lady is mainly where your spirit and your soul, your mind, are not in alignment. So that's why mostly you would need to get cleansed, right?
So what happens is now you've collected all of these negative energies about yourself and they've been reiterated through the universe, through validation. And the people that you've dated have broken you down so much. But what has happened also is that your aura, the energy around you, the divine pure spirit around you has sort of been corroded through all these pains that you do not fix. Um, your energy, the energy around you, the purity of your soul, of your spirit has become corroded. And it has started to also create new individuals, people. Uh, that's why you would see your slay queen um, type personality. That's why you would see, you know, whatever, your independent women. Now you start to tell yourself, you need to be in a particular way. You need to be somebody in a particular way so that you can cope with all. So you, you need to be all these things that you can cope um, with your past pains. And as time goes on, what happens? Your aura is being corroded. As your aura becomes corroded, A, two things start, two things happen. Baloi are easily able to access you and hurt you. Because actually what they're doing is that they're just taking your own karmic debt, your own negative energy and pushing it against you. They don't struggle to do that because you've done most of the work for them. So, nakilimoto, kibata ko ituta di klaro wadeva. Nga ko kapaka ka mpindom shai. You are vulnerable. B, you don't become likable to people. Because every person is divine. So what people around the world start to do, because we are all the same spirit, we start to mirror what you feel. What you... So, oh, my network is bad. So, we all start as cells of God to mirror what you feel. So you enter into a room, we all become depressed because of the negative energy around you. And because really bad, we don't know how to speak or we don't understand our own feelings and our spiritual connections. You walk into a room and people get angry. You speak, people get angry. Some people are trying to call me. So now you go into a depression because now you can't cope. Your spirit cannot cope with this with with this person that you've become until eventually you get to a point of such great depression you go through such great depression that you you are suicidal right suicide also funny enough the thoughts of suicide are actually the spirit's way of telling your body and so this depression and suicide is actually your spirit's way of letting your body and your soul know that we have departed so far from the divine God, from the divine definition of I am, that now we no longer know what we are. So you will feel to kill yourself because the spirit in itself, in its truth, it doesn't need a body to exist. So you will be driven to either, you know, Suicide or some people I know they have dreams where they are dead or they dream of their dead family members waking up from the dead. That is where now I will call that. I hope to explain that to you guys one day. Um, or that's where your pure and our spirit is. Pure and our spirits are the spirit of God, literally. So that's where it becomes your pure and our spirit becomes your defining point. You have been so misaligned from the purpose, from the God in you, that you don't know who you are anymore. And as a result to that, you have lost everything. You cannot connect with people. People hate you. And, well, for some people, it's because you've got a spiritual gift calling, you would say. But majority of the time, it's got to do with misalignment, right? And then that's how... These relationships also end. So by Dimu take all these relationships away. It's actually not even them. It's all you. You have worked yourself into madness, basically. You've worked yourself away from the divine calling that God has called you. Right. Now, you get karmic karmic relationships. So these are karmic relationships. And I always like to use the example, Ya Juta Selejeso, right? That is a perfect karmic relationship. Um, Jesus chose Judas knowing that Judas would come a Gisa type of thing, right? Judas accepted Jesus's um, invitation to be a disciple 
you know, from a spirit level, knowing that he's going to help Jesus Christ to be the Messiah that he is. That is how a karmic relationship works. You attract one another only to hurt each other severely. But the purpose of that is that there should be a higher calling, a higher self that will emerge from that. So without Judas, there is no Jesus Christ being a Messiah. Because guess what? No one sells Jesus Christ away. No one has the guts. And if no one sells Jesus Christ away, Jesus Christ doesn't get crucified. And if he doesn't get crucified, then he doesn't resurrect. And if he does not resurrect, then his message, his, 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 his good news cannot travel. He cannot, Jesus Christ cannot reach the level of ascension that he required. So Judas Legis, so they had a perfect karmic relationship. This was before they even came on earth. They said together, I will assist you in your life work. Through my selling you out, I will assist your mission to happen. And Jesus Christ says to Judas, thank you for assisting me. What I will also do is help you to learn or to find yourself and to experience the good news. Or to experience whatever uh, form of lesson that you will get. So after Jesus dies, Judas Lenik Yowei Bulaya, right? He kills himself. And that is the biggest proof that shows Hori Judas was actually a divine contract pushed by a pure Dao spirit because he has done his work and he kills himself, right? How we die doesn't really matter. Um, the spirit comes from one God. So that is a perfect example. And in today's world, we would have the boyfriend who will beat you up. You will have the boyfriend who, will, you know, it gets ugly. Most of the time, that is the Jesus and Judas connection, where now you have the opportunity now to say, okay, fine, I get to walk away from this and become a better person. That person, by beating you up, by hurting you, they push you now to start to fight for your own life and to want things for yourself, right? That's the first type. It's a karmic relationship. Most of us enter into karmic relationships before Retwaza because uh, you need that. You need somebody who's going to break you down. So that the new you can resurrect and you can be, that, that you can re-emerge. And yes, after that happens, after they break you down and you choose to die to the things that you believed and you re-emerge, then normally Libone, they die. So that relationship generally is not, it's not a long-term relationship, that person dies, right? And then you get, um, let me call it a, a soulmate relationship. Uh, this would be Jesus and Peter, Simon Peter. Soulmates walk, learn, exchange things. They teach each other, right? They propel each other in a particular direction. So Jesus chose Simon Peter because Simon actually becomes a disciple who will actually move the good news, right? However, Simon Peter also um, gets attracted to Jesus Christ because guess what? He was already living his life. He was already doing his things. He was, you know, he was fishing, he was making his food, his money. But now Jesus Christ calls him and says, look, you're going to catch a lot more fish. Your life can get better. Most of the time, soulmate relationships become like that. It is two people pushing each other to make their lives better. However, there will be betrayal. It must be there. So Simon would be the one who says, Peter, who first says, Master, I will never let anyone kill you or come near you. I'd rather die, um, but later does deny Jesus Christ. It is important that Simon goes through that. So normally these people who are our soulmates, we normally take them for granted. In the beginning, we make promises. We want to be with them. I will never let you down. And as time goes on, we take them for granted. Um, where now we deny them or we feel that they don't fit into our lives, right? Um, but it is part of the human experience. Uh, you must become, you must unlearn to relearn things. You need to redefine to yourself what this person is doing in your life. You need to check in with yourself all the time. Why do you want this person around? Because as long as you don't do that, then that person's purpose, it, it dies and you cannot continue to feed them. So Simon Peter becomes a soulmate relationship. I actually like their relationship because he was the one who saw now the resurrected, the healed Jesus, you know, and he was just so happy. Uh, and then you get, okay, 
we like to speak about both Thomas or Yanun Thomas Yanun. You get both Thomas Baba Kanko Bona, right? But Thomas again would be your twin flames, right? So twin flames, what they do is they just mirror, they just mirror you to you. If you've got a bad attitude, you're gonna date a boyfriend or a man who's got a nasty attitude. If you're a kind person, you would date a person who is kind. Normally, so uh, twin flames, they show you your biggest weaknesses. So if you're if you're a good person who speaks, you know, who likes to speak in public, your twin flame normally will be someone who's very private and they are very much to themselves. Um, they become like the opposite, opposite complementary part of you. And the reason why you must do that, hence what Thomas, Thomas Obatakobona, he wants to touch those those wounds to see are they really healed, right? The reason why you need that person in your life is because that person shows you the things that you have not dealt with in your own life. So whatever that you hate in that person, in any relationship actually, whatever you hate about that person, you must know that it is a pressure point or it's a pain spot for you in your soul. Right? If you hate, if you hate a person, um, whatever, you know, we get annoyed with people, of course we do. But when you, it becomes resentment, whatever that you resent about that person, it's actually, it's God's way of showing you that that's the one thing that you should have actually given to yourself. And you ask that person to give it to you. And now they're not giving it to you the way that they, that they should. So these are the different relationships, different contracts uh, that come. So Thomas Elena, he is required because there needs to be that person who says, Naki bata proof. Having a Thomas in your life pushes you or when you speak about something, you can make it happen. Right? So Thomas is not about your, your ideas and that. Thomas is a practical relationship. This is the person who says, come on. And the proof is in the pudding. So they propel you. They push you now to, to start to achieve your dreams. And when you don't, then they will be the first person to harm you. And they will move into a Judas situation. Uh, where, they, where they will become them or the next person will, you will get, you will encounter a Judas relationship where now you will die completely only to be able to get a Peter relationship at a later stage. Most of the time, has that twice right? Because you know you need to go through that process of death first um, and resurrection. Then you will get your Peter who is going to be there for you as a friend, as, as, as a disciple, as someone who's learning from you, but also somebody who's going to propel and move your vision forward. So that is why they, they, you know, they, need to, they need to crack your relationships. They need to break our relationships completely because they need us to redefine to ourselves, who am I? Without answering that question, you're going to date a lot of people and even get married to more and it's just going to get ugly. And all that does is that you become more and more and more and more disconnected. So that's why by the time we really about doing now, or by the time we're married, I mean, we date a person a couple of months or we get married a couple of months. After that, you know what? You're not really in the mood to sit there or it's a daily and have sex and whatnot. Because now that sex has always been a tool that you've used to get by through relationships. It was never about you. So I hope I'm going to speak about sex and Badimu next week and how they connect. But what I'm going to say in closing is that now we should all seek to have the type of sex that is all embodying, all encompassing. Sex should be used as a tool to open ourselves up spiritually to the next person with the knowledge and feeling safe and knowing that everything is created by God, holding back nothing, holding back no love, experiencing ourselves in that way without, without expectation. Sex should always be uh, an act to give, to give of yourself openly. And the moment we, we hold back on our love and our love becomes conditional for whatever the reason, and we need that person to validate us, then even the sex starts to become really poor. Because A, that person cannot continue validating you. And in Luena now you will start to need a higher or bigger drug to validate this monster that you've created. And eventually, the person that you're dating becomes now a manifestation of that demon. In any case, so you end up having sex with demons. So, that is precisely why we need to get cleansed after relationships that have gone bad. And we need to see, our, our, our soul needs to get washed. Whether it's or 
or kamizi or omizi nga matang or jiwasho. Your soul needs to get washed to rid yourself of some of that karmic debt so that you can work through yourself. So um, sex is incredibly holy, but it is an expression. It is time. It is also a way that we can we can use it. Hence, we've got Kama Sutras. People who work as Kama Sutra and they think what giddy positions and whatnot of higher pleasure, but it's actually deeper than that. Um, it, it will start to become a truly spiritual experience for you. And then you can enjoy being with that person all you like, right? Um, and that person will enjoy being with you all that they like because then nothing becomes taboo between you and that person. Your, your, your inner self becomes fully safe. So, okay, I'm going to close off, but I want to give you guys this beautiful analogy. My mother, my late mother, Ukilam for this wonderful analogy. Our sex is like the team. I don't know if you guys remember Nirjala the team. This was just crazy. I couldn't believe that this woman said this a couple of years back. My mom had a very crazy way of seeing things in life, and but she was spot on. So she said to me, listen, our sex is like the team. Latwa you are all from your homes through Lenyalo or whatever, but Utwakwain, your foundation. La Kopana Kostra thing, Kopatua di Tini, Kwaza diva. Mori Tini Mo, Kunalebato Kwatan Korbajiwa. Kunaleba, she's my network today icon. So, Kori Tini Kostra thing, you experience your highs, your lows, you know, you've got your team members, you guys must work as a team uh, to achieve this goal. Um, it's fine. And she said to me, I'll never forget this lesson. She said, after the teen, you have experienced yourself. And you've thought about how to make yourself better for tomorrow. So after all of that, you go back home. You go back to your source, to your higher self, to your God. And you start to speak learn, talk about what you've experienced. And she said to me, Ditini always, you need to come back and think about things. So this was just an amazing lesson and I found that it was true of many things. Or through sex, we can learn about ourselves, our own fears, our own insecurities. But we should always seek to keep on working on who we are as spirits, as souls, and let our lives become fun. I'm not at all even trying to, to say be promiscuous. But in life, um, we should walk this journey and especially through our relationships, knowing that we are safe and we are protected, right? Do take physical precautions, of course. But most of the time after relationships, we need to get a cleansing because those relationships are how by demo are going to crack us down to find our true self. So... Togozani, I think it's been an hour. I've done a very long viewing today. Um, I'm going to try to actually answer some questions. Um, I do hope that it gives a bit of context for why do relationships miss us, right? They don't actually miss us. We are the ones who miss ourselves. But um, I hope that it's going to bring us a lot of peace, especially those who've had issues with their relationships. Um, always look at yourself. Look at your relationship through you. Right. If a person cheats on you, if a person does this, instead of taking what they are doing and internalizing it, you should look at yourself. Do I feel that I deserve this? And if you feel you don't deserve it, you can walk away. And often it feels very difficult to do that because we've become so attached to wanting validation from people. So, yeah, um, if you fear that a person will leave you, Remember that now this is this is your inner God saying to you, you are in misalignment with yourself. You should always seek to ask and to want from your God who your true God, your maker is. So Togozani and it was fun. I waffled here and there, but it's fun. Next week, I hope to go into sex, but I think we're not ready for that. Uh, I hope to do something a bit more spiritual. Um, I'm open for suggestions. Please let me know what you guys want to hear about. Let me give you my two cents about what, what you guys want to hear about. So, um, Togazani, have a great night. Thank you so much. Even despite the, the network giving us problems. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you to all my friends. Thank you.
to all of you you guys are amazing you guys are amazing and i hope that we can all teach each other one lesson at a time have a great evening